NASCAR and country music, a duo as iconic as Peanut Butter and Jelly, Batman and Robin, or Harrison Burton and the Infield Garage. It should come as no surprise that NASCAR has a very long history with country, whether that's drivers appearing in various music videos or drivers actually recording their own albums. So let's take a look at some of the biggest crossovers and try not to cringe too hard in the process. So since it's Nashville week, more than likely if you leave NBC on long enough, you'll probably be greeted with that yearly segment where they go, Hey guys, did you know that Richard Petty and Friends recorded an album back in the 70s? Yep, NASCAR Goes Country, released in 1975, is a real thing. Unfortunately. At the very least, it came out 10 years before the Super Bowl shuffle started the trend of sports teams doing very bad rap songs. So maybe NASCAR was the real trendsetter all along. But NASCAR Goes Country is certainly a lot more niche. Heck, most of these songs on YouTube barely break 10,000 views. They're certainly not putting up Drake or Kendrick numbers. But hey, it's a bunch of old school NASCAR drivers doing covers of classic country songs. What did you expect? The album features Richard Petty, David Pearson, Cale Yarborough, Bobby Allison, Buddy Baker, and Daryl Waltrip. Some songs have them singing in a group, but most of them are solo acts. And bear in mind that for the purpose of this video, I had to listen to them. All of them. Well, I say that like it's a bad thing, but honestly, they're a lot better than I would expect for a bunch of redneck race car drivers. I mean, they're also not good, but they're not terrible. I can't play any of them here because, uh, you know, copyright reasons. But sheesh, Kale Yarbrough, I would say that you have a future in country music, if you were still alive. Richard Petty, though, uh, pretty awful. King of the racetrack, but definitely not the audio tracks. I think the funniest part of this whole thing is that the relatively young Daryl Waltrip, who's in the middle of his first full-time season, only got in on this because he didn't want to be left out of a group activity among NASCAR legends. But unfortunately for Daryl, things didn't exactly pan out as planned. Allegedly, the producers of the album gave Daryl a choice between $10,000 upfront for his part in the record, or if the record became a smashing success, Daryl could make a lot more off of royalties. Ultimately, Daryl made a grand total of... Zero dollars. Bobby Allison was apparently so upset with the lack of marketing that he ended up taking boxes of records to the racetrack to sell himself. But as for Richard Petty, he seems pretty glad that the record was a flop. So the real question is, why did this even happen? And the answer is, nobody really knows. It was just a fun idea to make some money, which ultimately they did not. Surprisingly enough, the album did not include Marty Robbins, an actual country singer who later became a NASCAR driver. Now, Marty may not have been a Hall of Famer the likes of Richard Petty or Cale Yarborough, but for someone who didn't have a background in stock car racing, he was fairly decent. He scored six top tens and only 35 starts, running part-time between 1966 and 1982. But doing a little more digging, Marty was actually a lifelong NASCAR fan who used the sales of his country albums to fund his actual dream of being a race car driver. His most prolific moment in the sport came in the 1972 Winston 500 at Talladega Super Speedway, where he qualified 15 miles an hour faster than anybody else. NASCAR tried to immediately give him the Rookie of the Race award, but Robbins politely declined, admitting to them that he had simply taken the horsepower restrictors out of his carburetor that NASCAR had mandated. Although Marty may have been snubbed from the NASCAR Goes Country album, which in retrospect he was probably very happy about, he did star in his own stock car racing movie, Hell on Wheels, released in 1967, which currently sits at 3.6 stars out of 10 on IMDb. Hmm, maybe the lesson here is that NASCAR drivers really shouldn't dabble in any forms of entertainment aside from NASCAR. But despite this warning, NASCAR drivers would return to Nashville a decade later for round two in the 1985 album, World Series of Country Music proudly presents Stock Car Racing's Biggest Entertainers of the Year. Wow, what a catchy title. Folks, Ned Jarrett here to tell you about a brand new double record album, 21 Favorite Grand National Drivers Sing 21 Original Songs Written by Top Nashville Songwriters. Drivers like Labadi, Elliot, Earnhardt, Allison, Bodine, Yarborough, Kyle Petty, just to name a few. Send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3.00. And this time, they went even bigger. The cast of drivers would increase from 6 to 21, including notable newcomers Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jarrett, Bill Elliott, and Kyle Petty. Apparently, this album is considered marginally better than NASCAR Goes Country, but it was still a massive commercial flop only selling roughly 20,000 copies before getting pulled. Apparently, this album was made in an attempt to reach out to a new demographic who might be interested in NASCAR, but didn't have the intended effect. Did they not think that people who listen to country music 
already watch NASCAR. Maybe the only standout performances on the record are Dale Earnhardt in his song Hard Charger and Kyle Petty with his song The People Who Love Me. People actually thought that Kyle Petty might be a better country singer than he was a race car driver. A low bar, honestly, but everyone has a talent. This actually made Kyle Petty pursue a brief career in country music in 1986, and he even got to be the opening act for Randy Travis one time. But after many disagreements between himself and the record company, he abandoned any attempts at a full album release. He later released O King Richard, a tribute to his father in 1995, and continues to do small musical performances to this day. But even Kyle Petty looks back on that 1985 NASCAR record and says, Listen, it didn't age well after the first week. It was always bad. So, at the very least, it seems like he was well prepared for that one to flop. Nowadays, it seems like NASCAR drivers are pretty well separated from country music. There haven't been any more attempts at an album since the infamous 1985 release, and NASCAR is far from the good old southern boy sport it once was. I mean, could you imagine Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, and Denny Hamlin coming together to drop a country album? I think an alien invasion has higher odds of happening. Though, it is worth noting Ryan Blaney and Bubba Wallace used to have a band together in high school, and Bubba still occasionally sings on the radio until his crew chief tells him not to. But in the world of country music, there's still the occasional song dropped about NASCAR. And since many NASCAR drivers tend to be friends with country artists, you will see them make occasional cameos in music videos. But they know better than to get on the mic. Carl Edwards once made an appearance in Justin Moore's Beta Hook, Dale Earnhardt Jr. appeared in Trace Adkins' Rough and Ready, and more recently, Austin Dillon appeared in Sunday Drive by Tim Duggar, which was actually filmed at the formerly abandoned North Wilkesboro Speedway. And just last month, John Hunter Nemechek made a blink and you'll miss it cameo in Luke Combs' music video of Ain't No Love in Oklahoma. And apparently, there ain't no love for Christopher Bell because they definitely should have used him instead. Also, Luke Combs literally sponsored Bubba Wallace in a race last year, so I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't been in a music video yet. Maybe Luke also heard that bad singing on Radioactive. But yeah, that is the nearly complete history of NASCAR drivers dabbling in country music, most of the time to the detriment of their own image. So the question is now, which driver do you think should give country music a shot? Let me know in the comments down below. But don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more videos just like this one, and check out DailyDownForce.com for more awesome NASCAR content.